Arit, Princess Alicorn of Hackers, by Lee C. Clair. Chapter 1. Welcome to the Dreamweb. 9 past 7. She was late again. Thankfully, I had taken that into account and set the time of the meetup one hour earlier. This way, we wouldn't miss our window of opportunity, and I'd still get to scream my head off at Dee Dee when she connected. A swarm of white snowflakes floated above, glimmering against the magenta sky. Strange. What were intrusion countermeasures doing here? This was supposed to be an abandoned sector. Nothing here to merit the attention of ice, at least not yet. Moving from hoof to hoof, I watched snowflakes brush several neon spires before flying off into the distance. Of course, I also had two escape protocols ready the entire time. At the first sign of a threat, I'd be out of here faster than a falling muffin. Unlike the real world, the dream web wasn't a very nice place, not for those who could see beyond its shiny surface. Originally, it was supposed to be quite different. A place of wonder, in which everything was possible. Instant communication, no borders, the ability to dream sculpt objects into reality. These were only a few of the promises given. I guess it achieved some of them, and had it been left that way, things might have been better. However, the Star Swirl conglomerate introduced the idea of payment for services, and that bucked up everything. A beep echoed in my ear. Dee Dee had just texted an apology, saying she'd be a few minutes late. Not that there was ever any doubt. Despite her impressive skill set in the web, punctuality remained a foreign concept to her. I was so going to make a scene when she logged on. In the meantime, I took the opportunity to catch up on the latest gossip. Things had been slow the last few weeks. Ever since the Sombra virus had managed to shut down three sectors, no pony seemed to talk about anything else. Even the Everfree forums were mostly full of somber speculation threads. According to the latest theory, it was all a conglomerate firewall experiment gone wrong. Absolute nonsense, in my view, but it kept ponies talking. Also, on the plus side, it had caused most of the big names to keep low, giving us little hackers a shot at fame. Dink, I heard Dee Dee through voice chat. Really, really sorry about this. Dad wanted to go through my homework. He's gone back to working 100 hours per week, so he doesn't get the chance to see me often, and... It's fine, Dee Dee, I sighed. There was no way I could get mad at her now. Just get here, okay? Already putting my gear on, came the reply. Even through the mic, I could hear her panic. Sorry, sorry. I'll make it up to you. I rolled my eyes. Always the same thing. Dee Dee was simply too kind for her own good. The sad thing was that she could only afford to be so in the web. In the real world, she was very different. So much that she only had one real friend. Well, two, including myself. We had agreed, however, to avoid contact as much as possible. It was better that way. Also, she wasn't the only one with secrets. Ever since the creation of the dream web, ponies had had two lives. One in the real world, and one in the web. Often, the two didn't overlap. I, myself, was a feared as a terror of the web. In real life, not so much. A blue logon cone appeared a short distance away along with the message, Diamond has connected. I watched as her avatar took form of her usual modified crystal purple of her usual modified purple crystal pony build. Nothing but eye candy, but it seemed to make her happy as well as attract more than a fair share of admirers. Please tell me you aren't mad, she ran to me the moment her logon was complete. I know I promised I'd be on time for once, but it's fine, Dee Dee. I did my best to keep from shouting. Celestia, she could really get annoying. So different from what she was like in the real world. If I had dared address her in that tone of voice in the real world, she would chew my head off and even cheerily wouldn't be able to save me. Let's just get this thing done before the sector gets collapsed. Sure, right, of course, she nodded eagerly. Ether windows of various sizes popped around her. Paper-thin rectangles of dream magic, they floated in front of her, their code runes glowing in a soft pink. Most of her protocols Dee Dee had written herself. Her ability to extract and modify web code was nothing less than frightening. I just really hope we get something. I was offered five invites for the Bolt tournament today and was sort of hoping to go. Her voice trailed off. Good thing my avatar couldn't frown, or, it, or I would have given Dee Dee a heart attack. I absolutely loathed Bolt. Many claimed it was to be the best game ever there, to be the best game there ever was. Every pony's chance to experience being a Wonderbolt in a magnificent fantasy setting. Personally, I found it dumb. 
It also gave Pegasi an unfair advantage, but then again, all games did. We'll get something at Grumbled. Madsters hardly ever wrong. Dee Dee didn't argue, but I could tell she was still disappointed. It was unfortunate, and I really did feel for her. Unlike me, she enjoyed participating in game tournaments. Not so much because she was good at it, she was downright terrible, but because she could spend time with ponies who hated her guts in the real world. When is our window? Dee Dee asked. Seven minutes till start, I checked. We'll have enough time so don't rush things. I won't. She flicked her tail. I considered for a moment whether to tell her about the snowflakes. Best not to. They aren't here anymore, so no need to worry her. Heard any rumors lately? I decided to take another approach. Other than the Samba virus thing. If I read another script pony conspiracy, I might actually bar from my tech. Dee Dee chuckled. At least it was easy to get her in a good mood. Word is that a tri presence has been spotted website, she said casually. Only do only double confirmation so far, so it could be a hoax. I froze. The tries or triumvirs were the creators of the web, or rather the idea behind it. It was common knowledge that two princesses and a zebra made the dream web. That, however, was false. No, they only created the first prototype. The star swirl conglomerate was the real creator, as they constantly reminded us all. To have a triumvir visit the web was extremely rare nowadays. I saw two of them on a fairly regular basis in the real world, but that didn't count. They had no idea who I was here, and I wanted to keep it that way. Which one? I did my best not to sound too excited. Twilight and Zakora, Dee Dee said while, mighty, while modifying some of her protocol scripts. There was one post about a Luna sighting, but I doubt it. Two at once? I moved closer, pretending to examine her code. Remained a full minute above the conglomerate cluster. No pony is confirming anything, of course. Want to check it out? Nah, I looked away. One thing at a time. Let's get this thing done first. Sure thing. Five more minutes, right? I nodded. Five more minutes. Why did I feel nervous, though? This was supposed to be a quick job. Wait till the sector was prepared for collapse, and then dig in to reach the source code. Rumor had it that hundreds, if not thousands, of undocumented functions could be found within. Access to such knowledge would undoubtedly provide a huge advantage, not to mention the bragging rights. I can imagine it now. My neck and Dee Dee's would be all over the forums. Even the big names would take notice. It would even it was even possible that we'd get to meet Badster himself and no longer rely on stolen second hoof chat logs to find out things he didn't wish to share with me. The future looked bright and yet I still couldn't shake the feeling something wasn't right. Dee Dee have you heard anything special about ice changes? I dared to ask. She gave me a puzzled look. A snowflake swarm passed through here a few days ago, I lied. That plus two tries showing up. Is there any way they could be connected? She interrupted. You know, it's probably nothing. Just get ready to dig through the code once it starts. I'll take care of the rest. One minute to go. Why can't I kick this feeling? The sector was completely empty. I had pinged twice to make sure. No other avatars, viruses, or ice systems. No alarming news in the early warning fee or the conglomerate eye. 30 seconds, I said, and activated a chameleon field around us, and just for good measure, launched a couple protocols of my own. This way, even if the snowflake swarm returned, we'd have three minutes before they could confirm us as a threat. Two ether windows appeared in front of me, displaying scans of the surrounding area. 10 seconds. Dee Dee started mumbling, saying thanks to web deities. One could say she was superstis superstitious almost as much as a gamer. Still, if it helped her focus, who was I to complain? Window has started, I whispered. Beside me, Dee Dee finished her prayer and then prepared a nuke packet targeting the ground. Normally, this wouldn't have any effect whatsoever. The way the dream web was constructed, nothing could affect landscape environments. The code was created by Princess Luna herself so as to be invulnerable. Any attempt to mod, delete, replace, or move would be ignored. There was one loophole, though. A few minutes before Sector was collapsed, it lost all its properties. However, and this was the kicker, it retained a direct link to the source code. Rumor had it that all the big names had gotten where they were by obtaining fragments of the code. They were all very secretive about it. The most I'd managed to get out of them on the subject was that obtaining it was a rite of passage. 
Then again, the pony I had spoken to was clearly drunk at the time and did say some rather strange things, including that he was a royal pumpkin who migrated south. Here goes nothing, Dee Dee said, and launched the new packet. I watched in wonder as a patch of ground in front of her lost its texture, transforming into a mesh of white strands. So far, so good. Elite, Philly, I smiled. This was the first time I've actually seen dream strands. Exactly the same kind Princess Luna had used during her fight against the Tantabus years ago. Curiosity made me reach out to touch them with my hoof. Are you crazy, Didi? Promptly stopped me. You have no idea what security is running on that. Dee Dee, please, I grumbled, if there were any. Suddenly, my ether screen started pulsing in red. Warning messages cascading down the screen like waterfalls covering them completely. This was bad. Very, very bad. I've cast a chameleon spell, I said, trying to appear calm. You keep going. Not a word to Dee Dee that a swarm of ice had seen through my chameleon field and was heading directly towards us. Instantly, I launched all avatar decoys and firewalls. Any other day, I was confident this would get the job done. Right now, I wasn't sure it would even slow them down. How long will you need? I kept launching every virus in my arsenal in the hopes one would somehow divert the swarm of approaching snowflakes. Sorry, sorry, came the response. I grumbled under my breath. Dee Dee only apologized like this when she was falling behind. Brute force it! I desperately was going through the contents of my gear drive, hoping to find anything remotely useful. Camouflage proved to be useless. As for viruses, the ice systems were disinfecting them faster than my system was launching them. You can afford to be sloppy. A few snowflakes broke off from the swarm and approached me mercilessly. I knew from past experience they were trying to inject code into my avatar. Once they did that, they had a relatively good chance of finding and discovering my real-world location. My personal details were masked, naturally, but that wasn't much of a guarantee. Dee Dee, I started scrambling mesh protocol. We're out of time, Philly. Please don't lag, please don't lag, she said, her words barely understandable. Mother of hackers, please don't let it lag. Bucket. No way I was hanging around. Without a moment's hesitation, I launched both disconnect protocols. Unlike DD, I didn't have the means to afford an avatar with an auto-disconnect feature. To my great surprise and horror, neither of them had any effect whatsoever. Don't do this to me, I shouted as more snowflakes gathered. I had spent months going through the web upgrading my avatar. All the data raids, the firewall testing, everything had gone to waste. Not only that, but my gear would also be rendered useless. Only foals entered the web with tagged gear. I would be forced to flash the ether storage and throw it away. And since my family wasn't rich, that was a serious problem. Harpy, I think we... Dee Dee started saying. I never got to finish the rest of the sentence. One of the stupid snowflakes had managed to pierce my scrambler. The neon-colored landscape of the dream web vanished, replaced by the soft tones of my bedroom. I had just been ejected into the real world. Fuck this nonsense, I shouted, and levitated my headgear off and into the wall. My body was still full of rage and adrenaline. This wasn't the first time it had happened. It usually took me a while to return to my normal self. The door to my room swung open violently, revealing a rather annoyed purple unicorn. I swallowed. Ding, she said, her voice dripping with disappointment. What did I say about swearing? Sorry. I looked guiltily at the floor. What if mom were here, she continued entering my room. It's bad enough you spend all your time in the web. You could at least behave properly outside. Always the same conversation. Not without reason, though. Amethyst was my big sister, and I loved her a lot. Her understanding of the web, however, was laughable. In her mind, it was nothing more than a second to quest you, only with more straight lines and structures. How could she understand what lurked beneath the shiny surface? Sorry, sis. I felt my aggression slowly phase away. I'll be careful. Promise. Well, I hope so, because this is the last time I'm having this conversation with you. That's what she said every time. Good thing she never meant it. I muttered some excuse as usual. We both knew I wouldn't keep my word, though this time I was going to try, like, seriously try. Things were complicated as it was, without me getting on Amethyst's bad side. Sure, she might be bossy and insufferable sometimes, but she was my sister and always looked out for me in this world. Food is in the kitchen, she said, giving me a careful look over. Shameful as it was, I still suffered from dyspepsia, mostly a result of bad posture, and my family was convinced it was due to my web habits. Therefore, I was on a carefully selected diet. Tidy up and come down. Yes, sis, I said quietly. 
After that, it's homework, bath, and off to bed. No dream web or anything similar. Got that? Yes, sis, I sighed. Not like I could enter the web even if I wanted to. That was a matter for another time. How to break the news that the gear Amethyst had spent half her savings on had just been rendered useless. Oh, one more thing, she stopped suddenly, causing me to almost bump into her. A cult from your class passed by. Apparently, there, he was under the impression you needed help with your photography assignment and was wondering what would be a good time. Is there anything I should know? I could feel the blood rushing to my face. Damn it, sis. Why do you have to be home all the time? Don't you have a job or a cult friend or something? It must have slipped my mind. I looked to the side, avoiding her glance. You know how cheerily is with homework. She gives out so many assignments it's difficult to keep up with them all. Well then, Amethyst narrowed her eyes. Way to go, me. Now I made her twice as curious. It's a good thing I invited him over tomorrow after school. Couldn't let you fail your assignments now, could I? The grin of a thousand nightmare moons appeared on her face. Merciful Celestia, take me now, I screamed internally. Author's note. Web gear. Virtual reality headset similar to the Oculus Rift. Allows the subject to enter a dreamlike state, thus accessing the dream web. Contains an ether storage crystal that holds all web avatar data. Licensed for use by the Star Wars World Conglomerate following patent 1147A-TWS.